This is the golden age of American invention, objective one, about all the various inventions that uh, came to be after the Civil War time period, after 1865, I should say, all the way up until around 1914. Now, there, there's a couple of different reasons why it's referred to as the golden age of American invention. One, of course, are all the inventions that came into being that I'm about to show you about that we still use today that are big parts of our lives. But the other part of that was... Uh, the general feel in this country of people who wanted to strike it rich through invention. While guys like Carnegie and Rockefeller and, and uh, um, Vanderbilt were getting rich off of big business, a lot of other people used to try to get rich or find the next big thing by creating it, by inventing it. It encouraged America to be innovative in many different ways. And uh, here's a number that I want you to be aware of here. From 1850 to 1900, there were 440,000 patents issued by the U.S. Patent Office. Now, there's a couple people during the golden age of American invention that you want to pay particular attention to. Uh, Thomas Edison, who we'll be mentioning a lot of times in this lesson, had 1,093 of those patents. That's 1,093. Um, and then also a guy named Nikola Tesla, who had approximately, or you know, depending on who you talk to, 280 to 300 patents during that particular time. Now, there were many other inventors as well, so I wanted to get you, give you a chance to see some of those, like this one here. Jot these years down, please, as we mention them, and go through all the different inventions from the golden age of American invention. Starting in 1853 with the potato chip, which was invented during that time. Blue jeans, also in 1853. 1857 brought us toilet paper although the packaging of toilet paper was just a little bit different back then. Breakfast cereal became very popular uh, starting in 1863, right in the middle of the Civil War. Barbed wire became popular in 1867, two years after the end of the Civil War. And in that same year, once again, 1867, we saw ourselves getting the typewriter, Ticker tape, you know, this is an old-fashioned stock ticker in a bubble, and this is the tape that would be used to uh, send out the results. They'd be printed on that stock ticker. Uh, ticker tape was a really big deal back then. Nowadays, we have the electronic stock tickers that make, you know, ticker tape basically useless, except for the good old-fashioned ticker tape parade. If you've never heard of that, that became a very common thing in the 1900s. Anybody did something really good, like Amelia Earhart in this picture, uh, after she finished her uh, cross-Atlantic flight, uh, you can see various streams of ticker tape in the, pack, in the background here uh, being dropped from windows all along New York streets. 1867 also brought us the uh, motorcycle in its earliest form. Uh, this was a steam-powered one, so technically it wasn't motor-driven yet. But as you can see here, they would eventually move on to a far more advanced model. 1876 is the year that brought us the telephone. Here's Alexander Graham Bell uh, demonstrating how the telephone was to be used at the very first transmission, or one of the first transmissions. And finally, we get to Thomas Alva Edison, uh, who is going to be the guy who has over a thousand patents that will be brought up in his lifetime. He'll be mentioned a lot in this lesson as we bring this up. Uh, in 1878, Edison, as a young man, came up with the phonograph, which, although it doesn't really look like it, was the first version of the record player. In 1879, the cash register was invented. And Edison struck again with his version of the light bulb. Uh, it's a little bit of a, a misnomer to say that Edison invented the light bulb. There are various people overseas that had experimented with it before, but the Edison light bulb would be the one that would become the far most popular one in America. So uh, 1879 is a big year for Thomas Edison and us. 1882 gave us the electric iron. 1884 gave us the first ever fountain pen. And 1886 gave us Coca-Cola, invented by a man named John Pemberton. 
you can see over the course of the years, here's the original bottle of Coca-Cola. Pemberton was a druggist and our pharmacist, and he actually came up with the formula for the syrup, mixed it with carbonated water, and it was pretty good. Uh, there have been various designs on the Coca-Cola bottle, all designed to be more sleek and easier to hold in the hand, and things along those lines all the way up to the modern day. Thomas Edison uh, also wanted to invent a lot of other things beyond what he'd already done, and he was often a little restless. Here's him with his second version of the phonograph, but he uh, got involved in a lot of other things as well. Among his thousand some odd patents was also the uh, motion picture camera in 1888. Uh, this is uh, again one of many patents that Edison came up with and we'll get into some more as they go along in chronological order. 1888, although not invented by Edison, 1888 also brought us the revolving door. And 1889 would see us with the first automatic dishwasher. Now, it was very hard to find a picture of the first automatic dishwasher, but here's an ad for it. And if you look closely, you can see the automatic dishwasher at the top. The idea was you would just basically put it in a barrel with some soap and use the handle to stir it around quite a bit, agitated as it were. But again, Edison in particular was always tinkering with uh, various things uh, that he had, trying to invent uh, other useful devices for Americans to use. One of which, which we'll get into in uh, uh, the second objective of this lesson, was uh, a little more dark for Thomas Edison and many of the things he developed. Edison is uh, often credited for coming up with the first electric chair in the country. That's not quite as happy as some of the other inventions he had made. 1890 was also the first year that we had the metal zipper. And Edison was at it again in 1891 with the talking doll being mass produced for little girls all over America and the world. 1891 also gives us the escalator and the mailbox, although neither of those was invented by Edison. 1892 gave us the first tractor and also the first Braille typewriter. As we continued on through the 1890s, we found other useful inventions that came into being for our entertainment and otherwise. In 1893 was the first use of the Ferris wheel. And, although it doesn't look like it in this picture, this is Henry Ford's first gasoline engine, which he created in 1893. Now again, he didn't come up with the first gasoline engine. It was uh, created in Europe sometime before but this was the Henry Ford model that was quite a bit more efficient. And Henry Ford himself would improve on the model, coming up with uh, much, much better versions. Here's a, a picture, believe it or not, of Henry Ford working on a, a V8 at that time. 1894 would mark the high point of an inventor named Nikola Tesla, an immigrant from Croatia, who uh, had many patents before 1894, and would end up with approximately 280 to 300 by the time it was done, as I've mentioned before. In 1894, Nikola Tesla did his work with radio waves and got pat various patents on those things. Now, the radio is, as far as, a, as being a credited inventor, was invented uh, supposedly by Marconi in Italy, but it's Tesla who really started to patent a lot of the work and the use with radio waves. Although it wasn't the radio that would be the coolest stuff that Tesla would work on. Uh, Tesla would eventually start working on uh, various forms of electrical current, and that's where his work would gain the most notoriety and, frankly, the most coolness. I mean, this is a really awesome picture. 1896 would bring us two things that were very important to later society. Uh, the first was the X-ray machine. And the second was the horseless carriage of Henry Ford, uh, also known as the quadricycle. This is a picture of Ford riding around in it with his wife. 
Here's a picture of Henry Ford uh, uh, inside, uh, sitting in one of his quadricycles, just getting a photo op taken many years later in his life. Uh, just, I guess, indicating how important the quadricycle was to American invention. And we still, to this day, uh, use the American automobile and foreign cars that generally come from the earliest concepts by Henry Ford with the quadricycle. More on that in a later lesson as well. 1897 brings us cotton candy. And 1898 saw Nikola Tesla at it again, really being the first one to perfect remote control of any sort. This was a small boat that had been put together uh, that was controlled remotely uh, by Nikola Tesla on the shoreline. 1899 gave us the first vacuum cleaner, although it doesn't look like a great model. And 1903 would mark the advent of a little something called the airplane. In 1906, Thomas Edison would be at it again. He had taken his concept of DC power, direct current power, that was being used in massive generation stations in the basements of the homes of rich people in the late 1800s and condensed it quite a bit into the alkaline battery. Now the battery of course at that time wasn't as small as uh, um, the alkaline battery that we know today uh, but it was a start and a very good start on Thomas Edison's part. Edison even got to the point where he wanted to get involved in the car business too which is a bit ironic because he was the one that convinced Henry Ford to build his quadricycle his gas-powered quadricycle. Well, Edison liked playing around with the electrical aspect of things as well and came up with the first electric car. Uh, I don't know exactly what year that happened, but it didn't necessarily take off right away. They're a little bit more popular now. But we would be totally remiss during this time period if we didn't mention a guy named George Washington Carver. Now, not many people have heard about George Washington Carver, but he was pretty significant in terms of taking agricultural products and turning them into other products of everyday use. Carver, and I know you're going to have a hard time reading this in the slide, but Carver was uh, born in 1860, died in 1943, and during his life he was a scientist who studied diseases and made more than 300 products from peanuts. Uh, he also made soap and ink from the peanuts, among the various things. He's also always credited with creating peanut butter as well. He also made 118 different products from potatoes, including flour and candy, and he made 75 products from pecans, and even made a building material for walls from corn stalks. Uh, George Washington Carver, uh, with all the different things he came up with, just by using agricultural supplies, just uh, agricultural plants, uh, was one of the greatest inventors of the time period. So therein lies the golden age of American invention. Now, what do we do with all these inventions? Well, if everybody wants them, we have to mass produce them and turn them into businesses. And that's what we're going to take a look at in Objective 2.